Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before His throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea. Let all creation praise His name from the ends of the earth. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Good morning. It is, it, it's, it's good to see everybody. Uh, there's a lot of people here. We have a lot of visitors. Uh, we, are, <clears throat> we are glad if you're visiting with us. If it's here uh, because you have children graduating, we're glad uh, if you're here... Uh, uh, just because you're here, we're even more glad. And we want you to be with us any time uh, that uh, you can. Uh, I want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, from Friday until next Monday, the back door coming into the gym area will, will, will be closed because we're having to redo the floors. And to find a time when there's no latch key and no, nothing is real hard. So next Sunday, particularly, for most of you, it will be, you got to come in the front door, which is this door. The side door is the front door, in case you don't know. We don't have a front door. So uh, remember that. Also, this Wednesday uh, at 11 o'clock, uh, I think Gary Gage and Ross Bilby are heading up a deal to put out our flags uh, for the Memorial Day weekend. And if you can help with that, we would love to, to have you uh, come and help put the flags up. Uh, also, uh, let's see. Uh, I want to get you to thinking. Uh, next September, which we're kind of trying to plan ahead, we are going to have uh, Tim Young come on September the 9th. That's a Saturday. And he's going to do a kind of a marriage enrichment thing. He is a... a by profession, he is a marriage and family uh, therapist and is really good at it. Uh, he is also about as gifted uh, with scripture as anybody I've, I've known, including uh, preachers. I mean, he could do that if, if he so chose. But be looking toward that. If you are married, if you're planning to get married, if you want your marriage to be better, if you want uh, to uh, know what you're going to do when you find a, a mate, uh, kind of mark that on your calendar, September the 9th, because I can tell you, I've, I've never heard him do what he's going to do today, uh, but I guarantee you it'll be good. So you, you ought to mark off September the 9th and try to be here. Uh, I want to mention that we have a list in the bulletin uh, of our people that are sick, and we want to keep praying for them. Uh, uh, today, we have uh, uh, a special day, uh, because at this church, we feel it is really important to train up young people in the way that they should go, so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. And we want to train families 
to train their children. And this being the big family, we want our people in here to be a part of helping train all the children that grow up here. And so today we are taking a day to honor our seniors who uh, most of that group pretty much grew up here. And so uh, we'll be doing that. It'll be a little different than before, but we want to uh, honor them and we want to challenge them, which we've already done that during the class period. But we, we want you to be behind them and encourage them as they begin this new section in their life of, of growing up and sprouting their own wings uh, and primarily to encourage them uh, to be faithful to God. So we're going to take that time today. And I, I would say uh, a great thanks to Jared who has spent a lot of time with these, these people, these uh, young people, uh, as he has been uh, here for most of, of their time. Uh, that said, uh, we're going to uh, bow in prayer and then we will continue. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for all that you have done and are doing and will do for us. We thank you for your patience and your grace that you extend to us as, as weak people. And Father, we confess to you that we do not always do things right, but we pray that you would uh, forgive us, that you would pick us up and carry us on. And Father, today we pray a special blessing upon these young seniors that are about to start this new time in their life, and we pray that you would impact them greatly uh, and strengthen their faith. Father, we pray for those who are grieving uh, the loss of loved ones who are grieving challenges that have come their way. And we pray for those who are struggling spiritually. And we pray for those who are struggling physically. And we ask you to bless and heal them in all these ways. And Father, we uh, pray that you would uh, be with this church. And we pray that each of us uh, could be molded and shaped to look more like Jesus so that as a body of Christ on this earth, we pray that we could carry out and show the world that Jesus really was your son and really did come and die on a cross to be the savior of the world. And it is in his name that we pray, amen. know that song so I'm not going to sing it. Uh, Lacey and Christy Baggett have asked me to uh, make an announcement on behalf of them as the nursery reader, uh, leaders so I'm going to um, hang on of course my, my phone would mess up there we go uh, read it as it's written so I don't forget or miss anything. First of all we are so grateful to all of you who have helped in the nursery this past year it's been such a wonderful resource to so many families thank you thank you. We still need your help and have lots of spots to fill to get us through September. The sign-up sheet is in the foyer to the right as you exit, so please try to stop by and sign up for a spot or five. <laughs> it says I'm supposed to wink here, so I don't know about that. <clears throat> if you haven't signed up for the nursery before, please don't hesitate to ask Christy Baggett or Lacey Welch if you have any questions. Uh, let's just go ahead and have them stand in case you don't know. Lacey and Christy, uh, but in seriousness, this has been a, a great resource uh, for a lot of families, uh, including mine, um, and we have more babies being born um, here, so it's going to continue to be a resource, so if you do have that on your hearts to volunteer to help out with a nursery, it would be very much appreciated, and again, the sign-up sheet's right there by the Welcome Center as soon as you exit to your right. Thank you. Stand with me, would you? I am a hard-fighting soldier on the battlefield. I am a hard-fighting soldier on the battlefield. I am a hard-fighting soldier on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand a sword and shield. I've got a helmet on my head and in 
my hand a sword and shield. I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand a sword and shield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. You've got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield. You've got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield. You've got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. I've got a message of good news for the sinful and the sad. I've got a message of good news for the sinful and the sad. I've got a message of good news for the sinful and the sad. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Jesus is my captain and he fights my battle still. He has never lost a battle and I know he never will. I've got the word for my sword and faith for my shield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. When I die, let me die in the service of the Lord. When I die, let me die in the service of the Lord. When I die, let me die in the service of the Lord. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will see you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. in your ways and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you Praise you. Lift you up and raise you. Oh, you are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Halle, halle, hallelujah. All the glory is to you.
about communion and us sharing it together, um, I started thinking about historical markers. Um, some of you, no doubt, have probably stopped along some sort of uh, road trip or something at some random historical marker to go, hmm, wonder what happened here. Wonder what this signpost is about and why it's historical. Some of you may even be that person in your family that has to stop and read every one of them while the rest of the family wants to keep moving on. Um, I found out this past week that we have a new historical marker in our town. Some of you probably know this and probably know the story, but I didn't know it. Um, apparently, our square here in Paris was the first place that they ever served Coca-Cola in Texas. There you go. We had no idea how significant we were. So, last weekend, Coca-Cola gave free Coke floats and put up a historical marker um, there on the uh, collegiate shop building. So now, when people are walking around, shopping, or doing whatever, they can stop and go, huh, what is this about? And they can read it, and they can know that this was the site of the first place that they served Coca-Cola in Texas. Um, some historical markers like that are sort of fun and trivial, and others have more significance uh, in their meaning. But one of my favorite uh, places in scripture has to do with a historical marker. It's in Joshua chapter 4. It's when the Israelites are about to cross the Jordan and uh, go into Canaan. So I'm going to read starting in verse 1. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over, 
Carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of, of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. I love that because it's a significant moment in history as their people, as the people of God, as the story of God. And what did they do? They take stones from the very river that they crossed, they pile them up, and it's not an elaborate statue, doesn't even have like a little gold plaque that reads what happened. It just says, when kids come by here and they say, hey, what is this? Tell them the story. Tell them what happened here. Don't let them forget. Remember the story of God and how he brought his people into the land. We have our own um, historical marker in what we're about to do. Jesus, with his apostles, took a very simple, simple elements of a meal, but he made it powerful when he stopped and he said, I want you to remember this. Every time you get together and you do this, I want you to see this bread as my body and the wine as my blood. And just that simple act of invoking remembrance now helps us, even all this time later, to remember the significance of what happened. So when we come together, and it's just simple, It's been simplified down to this, oddly enough. Um, But I think the power is in us stopping and recognizing what this represents and to remember what happened. In the story of us, in the story of God's people, in the story of God all throughout time, that this was a significant moment. This is what allows us to be reconciled with God. So sometimes it seems sort of rote and simple and mechanical in the way that we have these sorts of things, and sometimes it's not even very long. But I think the importance is the pause and the remembrance of what Christ did, who he was, and what that means to us in our lives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say one prayer and then we're going to give plenty of time for you to take the bread and the juice, but also to remember to just take some time. And sometimes that's hard for us to sit in silence. We kind of want to do things. We want to move to the next thing, but it's okay. Stop and just remember. Remind yourself what this meant that so long ago Christ brought this up and set it forth as something to remember his sacrifice. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for our time here. We thank you for the people who come and who meet here and who worship together and live life together and support each other. We thank you for the family of God and the support structure that it is. God, we thank you for your son and his sacrifice and the willingness to go through the pain and the suffering on our behalf. We recognize that it is only through that that we have a chance to be with you. God, we also know that we are forgetful We know that we get busy, 
And we know that things tend to fade in our memory and the importance fade, but help this to be a time that we remember that it is not only a significant historical event, but it's an event that currently every day and on into the future should mold and should shape the way that we live and the way that we interact with everyone else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will, stand with me on this next song. I was thinking about you seniors as I I picked the songs this morning. I thought this was really fitting for the stage of life you're in, but it's really fitting for all of us. Um, Think about these words. I know they go by fast, and this is one that will get our our blood pumping, but um, I really think this is very applicable for all of us as we charge into new stages of life, and um, we're more than conquerors because of, of Christ. When my hope and strength is gone, you're the one who calls me on. You are the life, you are the fight within my soul. All your resurrection power. Oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to start that one over. I swallowed wrong. Let me just start over because I, that, that got me off um, on a bad start. Thank you, Jared. Here, how about you do it? Come on. <laughs> All righty. Sorry about that, everybody. When my hope and strength is gone, you're the one who calls me on. You are the life, you are the fight within my soul. All your resurrection power burns like fire in my heart. When waters rise, I lift my eyes up to your throne. We are more than conquerors through Christ. You have overcome this world, this life. We will not bow to sin or to shame. We are defiant in your name. You are the fire that cannot be tamed. You are the power in our veins. Our Lord, our God, our conqueror. I will sing into the night. Christ is risen and on high. Greater is he living in me than in the world. No surrender, no retreat. We are free and we're redeemed. We will declare over despair, you are the hope. We are more than conquerors through Christ. You have overcome this world, this life. We will not bow to sin or to shame. We are defiant in your name. You are the fire that cannot be tamed. You are the power in our veins. Our Lord, our God, our conqueror. Nothing is impossible. Every chain is breakable with you. We are victorious. You are stronger than our hearts. You are greater than the dark with you. We are victorious. We are more than conquerors.
conquerors through Christ. You have overcome this world, this life. We will not bow to sin or to shame. We are defiant in your name. You are the fire that cannot be tamed. You are the power in our veins, our Lord, our God, our conqueror. Our Lord, our God, our conqueror. Thank you, Stephen. God is good, amen. amen. God is good, amen. amen. So a few, few notes real quick. Uh, as Jay said, next week we will not be entering that, that part of the building, which works out because next Sunday morning for Bible class, we will all gather in here uh, for some new song and praise time, and then uh, we'll, we'll take a break and lead us into our worship time. And so that's next week. Uh, I need a volunteer. I, I thought of this earlier. I need a volunteer to come see me after, uh, after church who's willing to stand outside and hold up a sign that says enter at the other door. Because I know there'll be several of us that'll get almost to this door and then have to walk around. So uh, holler at me if you, you want to do that. All right, Lewis. Uh, also, uh, you'll, you know it's Senior Sunday. Uh, you'll see the baskets there in the back. Uh, those are for you to put gifts. Uh, they love gift cards. Uh, that, that's a big thing. Uh, just anything that, that can help them into their next step in life, going into college and into their career. So those are back there. The names are in the bulletin, of course. We'll see a slideshow here in just a minute. I had a... Uh, a high schooler uh, come up to me and turn in a, a, a scriptural journal. It's, it was the book of Philippians. And it's just the book of Philippians. And on, on one page, it's got the scripture. On the other page, it's got blank where, where you can write in it. And they gave it to me. And, and as I opened it up, I was shocked at how much study that had gone into this scripture journal from this high school student. Uh, I mean, the pages were just filled with thoughts and, and, and tying back into other scriptures and what things in that passage jumped out to them. And that, that individual is Canon Poor, who has been a student of God's Word. And John Cannon, his grandfather, had the privilege of baptizing him yesterday. So let's give Cannon a round of applause. Let's get into uh, to the book of Hebrews. We're, we're finishing out today. Stephen, I know I'm short. Not that short. We're finishing out the book of Hebrews today. Uh, we're going to look at chapters, uh, chapter 12. And this message, as I, as I was looking at Hebrews and, and kind of trying to decide how to break it apart, I had in mind this Sunday for our seniors. So I definitely want our seniors to pay close attention, our, uh, our seniors in high school. I do want everybody else to pay even more attention because I think it's more applicable to, to everyone here. And so as we look in the, the Hebrews, we're reminded that the writer is trying to build this case, or not trying, who, who is building a case that Jesus is greater. That Jesus is greater than, than the messengers and the angels, and he's the greatest message. He's greater than the Moses and Melchizedek. He's greater than the high priest. He's greater than the sacrifices. Jesus is greater because he is the exact image, the exact imprint of God. And in his time with his disciples there at the end, he tells them, he says, you know the Father, you know him. And you've seen the Father because you have seen me. And so as we close out this book, I want to jump down in the middle of Hebrews chapter 12. And we'll start with verse 14. Hebrews 12, verse 14. 
Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterwards, as you know, when he wanted to inherit these blessings, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. And so the writer knows that his audience is is going to hear this man's name, Esau, in a little glimpse of the story, and it's, it's going to spark some understanding of what the writer is trying to get them to see, what the writer is trying to get them to grasp, to, to take home with them. And so as, as I looked at this, I thought, we need to go back and look at Esau a little bit more. So let's jump back to Esau in Genesis chapter 25. And hold your spot there in, in Hebrews 12, but we're going to jump to Genesis chapter 25. And we're going to skip down to verse 27. Now I want to encourage you this week to just go back and read all of this chapter here. Genesis 25, starting in verse 27, and it reads, The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man to the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, But Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the country, open country, and famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I am famished. That is why he is also called Adam. Verse 31, Jacob replied, First sell me your birthright. 32, Look, I am about to die. Esau said, What good is a birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. And he ate and he drank it. And he got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. And so in this, in this passage here, in this, in this recount of this story that took place, there's this tension, but there's this moment in where Jacob and Esau, you can see there's some differences. Jacob wants to to be at home and and apparently he can cook some good stew while Esau is this hunter. And and Esau comes in from the field, from this open field, and, and he's been working and he's famished and he looks at his brother and he says, give me some of that red stew. I, I believe the, the, or the Hebrew here is, give me some of that red, red stuff, all right? He doesn't even really give it like a, a real name. He just says, give me some of that red stuff. All right? It's a, it's a tad bit rude, all right, when you walk into the cook and you tell him, just give me some of that stuff, right? And so he, he, he calls out to him and he says, I'm famished. Look, I, don't you see I'm about to die? Now, I have some questions on whether how famished he is, all right? Because usually when, when I've worked in the yard or worked outside all day and I've been hot all day and I haven't ate, I'm not really starving in my mind anymore. Like, I'm past that point. And I, I'm, I'm not hungry. Nothing sounds good, all right? But then on the other side of that coin, he hunted, right? And, and, and I don't know many hunters, and John Cannon, you can help me out. I don't know many hunters that would come in craving a bowl of vegetarian soup. <laughs> Amen, right? Where's the meat, Right? And so maybe he was hungry. Maybe he was famished so much that this, this hunter would eat some meatless lentil stew. Now, I like lentil stew. Paris Bakery has had some lentil soup. But I don't call that eating, all right? Uh, I feel like for me to eat something, I have to do a lot of chewing, all right? Well, I'm supposed to do a lot of chewing, all right? And so lentil stew just kind of 
goes down you quick. And this image he gives, this, the writer gives about this, is he, he, he gulped it down, he drank it down. Like the original text, this, this is kind of used only in regards to how animals might eat. And so again, maybe he was famished. Maybe he was really hungry. As he just gulps it down. But in this moment, what really takes place is that Esau can only see here and now, in this very moment. He can only see what's right there in front of him. He can only feel his, his belly growling in that moment. He's not thinking about the next day or the day after that. He's only thinking about that moment, and he wants to be satisfied as quick as possible. And he's willing to give up a future. He's willing to let go of what could be ahead of him because he wants what's right here and what's right now and what's the quickest and the easiest. This instant gratification kicks in and he lets go of his birthright. The birthright of the, the, the blessing that would come from his father, a blessing on, on behalf of God, this birthright that would allow him to, to have uh, some land, a birthright of being the firstborn that would make him like the chief, the leader of the family. He would be the one that would take over the leadership. He's going to let go of that, this birthright that would give him a double portion of the wealthy or the, the inheritance there. He's willing to give all that up because right here and right now in this moment, his stomach is growling. He's tired. And all he can smell is vegetarian soup. And even that will do. And so as I think about that, and I think about how this fits in the Hebrews, the writer is, is trying to amplify. You don't have to give in to everything that's here and right now. That there is something out there. There is something ahead of you. There is something out in front of you that I want you to pursue versus the fleshly desire that you have going on right now. And obviously there was, they were dealing with some type of persecution, some oppression, some struggles that was getting them to, to take their focus off of God, off of Christ, and looking back towards Egypt towards a life of sin, satisfying the desires of their flesh. And he's dealing with this, this idea of apostasy where eventually they give in to that flesh so much that they turn away and they reject God's blessing. It says that Esau despised his birthright. Esau threw it away. Like it literally means that he cast it away as if it were nothing with content, not thinking about it. And so the writer in Hebrews is stressing to the people, don't throw away what God has out for you in your future. Don't throw away what's before you. Don't cast it away the plans that God has made for you, all for what might feel good or be quick and easy today. And isn't that how sin works? The desires of our flesh get us to, to focus in on, on our stomach growling in that very moment and all our attention goes in on that and we see the food and we see it's pleasing to the eye, and it might be gaining some knowledge. And so we take it off the tree, and we let go of our birthright. So seniors, as I think about that, I think of that tension, that struggle, when I was in high school and going into college and yesterday, uh, I think of that, that tension and that struggle of the instant gratification, of trying to maybe take the, the easy route, of trying to, to make the, the shortcuts or, or go for what, the path of least resistance, right? 
And in doing that, I might fall into temptation and sin, and I miss out on a beautiful future that God has for me. The writer here, let's go to Hebrews chapter, at the beginning of chapter 12. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. And here you listen to this, and run the race, run this race with perseverance that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, not on our stomach, not on the growl within us that's hungering for the, the fleshly desires, but we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith. We're going to take a pause and we're going to watch a, a senior slideshow and then we're going to uh, present the, the Bibles to our seniors. Uh, and then one of our elders is going to pray over them. Then we're going to ask our seniors to sit down. And then we're going to follow that with the tradition that we've done before as well. And that's honoring our, our children who are in kindergarten going into first grade. And so we're going to ask that you parents come up uh, with, with your child when, when they're called in kindergarten and first grade. I don't think the seniors need the parents to come up. I think they'll, they'll make it up here. All right. So we're going to watch this video real quick that Kim so graciously put together for us. My name is Braden Brown. I am the son of Chris and Rhonda Brown. I am a senior graduating from North Lamar. After high school, I have committed to play football at Missouri Southern State University while getting my degree in kinesiology. I plan to become a physical therapist. My favorite verse is Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Hello, my name is Gibson Dias. My parents are Jason and Sherry Dias, and my grandparents are Kathy and Joe Daniels. I am graduating from North Lamar High School, and in the fall, I plan to attend Southern Arkansas University. There, I will get a bachelor's degree in biology pre-health, and then either go to PA school or medical school. My favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Hey guys, my name is Aubrey McCarter. My parents are Michael and Lindsay McCarter. I will be graduating from Chisholm High School. My plans after high school are to go to A&M Commerce to hopefully pursue a degree in criminology. My favorite Bible verse since I was young is Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. Thank y'all so much. My name is Shelby Nassler. 
I'm the daughter of Andy and Molly Neisler and the granddaughter of Audie and Vicki Neisler. Recently graduated from Honey Grove High School. In the fall, I plan on attending Tyler Junior College. I'm going to be a member of the Apache Band. While in the band, I will be working on my associate's degree in general studies or music. Throughout high school, I've lived by 1 Timothy 4.12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and life and love and faith and in purity. Hi, my name is Gemma Nesbitt and my parents are Michael and Jennifer Nesbitt. I am graduating from Chisholm High School and I plan to attend Oklahoma State University to pursue my business degree. My favorite verse is John 3.30, which says, He must increase, but I must decrease. And as I move forward on my journey, I want to keep my focus on Him and take the focus off of me. The more I keep my eyes on Jesus, the more people will see Him and not me. I want to give Him the glory and let others see Jesus in me. My name is Cannon Poor and my parents are Kurt and Melissa Poor. I'm graduating from Poor Academy, which is just a cooler way of saying that I was homeschooled. I plan to attend Oklahoma Christian University in the fall and pursue a degree in public relations and social media, as well as a second degree in vocational ministry. My favorite Bible verse comes from the Gospel of John in chapter 3, verse 30. It says that he must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. As followers of Christ, this verse serves as a constant reminder of who we are living for each day and the mindset that we should always seek to have as Christians, not living for our own desires, but seeking the desires that Christ has for us. You know, Jared's got everything scripted out for us. Unless you leave part of it at home, then I had to scramble. Thankfully, he had his phone with him, and he was able to pull it out for me. Thank you, Jared. He's done a great job in organizing this whole, this whole morning. We'd like to recognize our seniors and present them with a Bible. First, I'd like to invite, and I think I have these in alphabetical order, if my alphabet works the same way it used to, Braden Brown. <laughs> Gibson Dias Aubrey McCarter Shelby Neisler. Not with us today is Gemma Nesbitt. She is with her family on a vacation. And our last senior, Cannon Poor. If I could have all the elders join us up here, we want to pray over our seniors. Lewis. 
seniors as they're walking down, I just want to say one thing. Uh, out of that text, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. As you think about your future, as you think about dealing with that instant gratification, you have a cloud of witnesses that are here to help you walk that out. And so we love you and we're here for you. And I pray blessings on you guys. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, again, we thank you so much every day for the many things that you bless us with. And Father, today, as we are here and honoring our seniors today, Father, I just ask that they continue to seek after you. Father, as they leave home and venture on a new, a new life, away from home, Father, I just ask that you be with them and that they do continue to have that strength and courage to continue to look up to you. And Father, today we I want to lift up Braden, Gibson, Aubrey, Shelby, Gemma, and Cannon. And Father, we thank you for them and Father, we've enjoyed the, the, being with them and seeing them grow up and become young men and young women. But Father, I just ask that you continue to be with them and they continue to seek after you. For all this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. As has been our tradition, has been announced, we want to recognize our young people that are going from kindergarten to first grade. It's a special time for them as they move up in their lives, and we want to recognize these young men and women, and I may or may not have these in alphabetical order. My, 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 al my alphabetizing was not as good. We're gonna give it a try. A, B, C, D, okay. Jensen Fisher. Don't believe Jensen's here today, okay. Kanan Johnson. And we ask the parents or grandparents to come with them, please. All right, stand right there if you would, good job. William Kirby. Eva Lee. And Sage Prestridge. Let's have a round of applause for our kindergartners. This is on, on behalf of your church family, I want to share how proud of you we are. We hear you learning memory verses and singing songs of praise and worship. We see the joy on your faces as you share with your family the lessons you have learned in class. We see you growing closer to each other and in your knowledge of the Bible and closer to God. We love you and we give you all the encouragement and support as you move up in LA Kids. Again, if the elders would please surround our, our kiddos and families. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we 
are thankful for everything that you do for us. We know that children are a reward from you and we thank you for these kindergartners that we are uh, beginning kind of their school journey as we watch our seniors leave that journey. Father, we pray that all of us, and especially their parents, can mold and shape these children to love you, to know Jesus, and to walk in his footsteps. We're thankful uh, for Stacy, who is overseeing their Bible class times, and we pray that you would bless her and others who teach them. And Father, we pray that these children will ever keep their eyes on you and that all of us as their family uh, will be with them and know them and that in about 12 years uh, we can see their pictures on, on the screen. But most of all, Father, we pray that we can see them walking with you and <clears throat> walking as your children. We ask you to bless them and keep them. In the name of Jesus, amen. It's always an opportunity to recognize graduating seniors as well as our kindergartners. For our family, it's especially a blessing to be able to present a scholarship or scholarships to deserving graduates from Lamar Avenue. Some of you... Go purple. Purple. There we go. Mom and Dad moved here in 43. Dad worked at Ayers. Mother found a job out at Camp Maxey working for one of the commanding officers. Mother and Dad were married September the 26th of 1933. My dad made a promise to my mother. My dad wasn't one that attended church regularly. He grew up in the Presbyterian church, and it wasn't something that his parents regularly did. My grandfather and my great-grandfather were both elders at the Johnson Street Church in Greenville, and my dad made a promise to my, my grandfather that he would see that mother was in church every time the doors was open, and he did. Starting in 1943 at 707 Lamar Avenue, where Lamar Avenue used to be, where I grew up in the early years. 33 years later, I, I came along after they were married. Accidents happened. Uh, that's the story I'm sticking to. And he still saw that Mother and I were at church every time the doors opened. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, VBS, whatever it took, we were there. You know, Mom never nagged about Dad to go to church, but she was that example that, that led him. In 1966, Dad started regularly attending church. I would have been 11 years old, so if you want to do the calculations. And two years later, in an August day, an August Sunday, in this baptistry, my dad and I were baptized the same day. Mother had lived out that Christian example. For the next 30 years before the Lord took Dad home in 86, he was a faithful servant at this church, and he loved to be here. Because of mom's influence in dad's life, in my life, and in the lives of others, 
We made the decision when mom died in, in 03 that we wanted to do something really special. And this church, you, you know, never, first of all, never question the ability of God to give. Because I said, whatever is given to the church in mom's name for a scholarship will match it. And boy, this church gave generously. And over the next few years, we were able to grow that amount and grow it a little at a time to where now we can give scholarships of a little bit more size than we started out. You know, when we thought about that, and through the years we have been able to, to award scholarships, we tried to be very succinct in how Lisa and DJ and Haley and I look at this. And, and I want you to know that the decision that we reach each year is based on, on this information. Any senior who is active in the youth group can apply. They must attend the church and youth activities. And we just we rely on our attendance records and some personal information that they need to be active at least 75 percent of the activities here at church. They must be dedicated to the Lord's work and successful in their high school career. We also ask for a letter of reference. Today we were blessed. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had a, a dear friend, an anonymous donor, uh, said, "I want to know who you're awarding to, and I may want to help out." And they did. And today we're excited that we get to present not one, but two scholarships for $1,000 to a couple of our kids. I say that for a couple of reasons. There are people in this church who have asked me how that happens. And again, if you want to know more about how maybe you could create an endowed scholarship, I'd be happy to talk to you. Stephen can talk to you about it. We'd be happy to help bless our kids for other causes. The Stallings have some scholarships that help kids go to camp as well. So if you're interested in that, I'd be happy to visit with you. But this year, the two applicants both excelled in the chosen school, uh, in their involvement, in everything they did. They are uh, an honor to their parents and their grandparents. We asked one of them, said, uh, what do you enjoy most about the youth group? And they said, uh, favorite memory was kayaking in Beaver's Bend. The other recipient said, the youth retreats at Camp Deer Run, lock-ins, and mission trips. We asked them what are the challenges that they're facing today. One said was not buckling under the peer pressure to do things that are ungodly. The other one said abstain from the content that the world feeds us through social media. Could I get an amen? You know, just saying those things by these seniors is accountability that they're asking for. And it's our role to make sure that we do all we can to help them be accountable. By the bio, it's going to give away real quick who our recipients are, and that's okay with me. I've been in banquets that we're trying to give out an award. We do everything we can not to give any inkling who it is until the words are announced. I can't do that here. In alphabetical order, the student, uh, one student will be attending Southern Arkansas, possible uh, pre, uh, a PA or medical school. The other one will be going to Oklahoma Christian, seeking a degree in PR and social media with a another minor in vocational ministry. It's often said by many around that the youth are the church of the future, but I disagree with you a little bit. Kids like ours are the church of today. Gibson says, the friends and connections I've made through the youth group and the Mike Singers will help me stay close to God. Building a habit of attending every Sunday morning and Wednesday night will allow me to do the same once I'm at college, and this will allow me Notice he said, allow me, not force me, to follow closely in the footsteps of Christ. Cannon said, Lamar Avenue has shown me the importance of being a part of a church family and the importance of relationships with fellow followers of Christ. DJ worshiped today at the West End Church of Christ in Wales, England, and he sends his greetings to you today. Uh, we were trying to figure out to get a video back over here for him to announce this instead of me, but it didn't work out. But I am pleased to present to both Gibson Dias and Cannon Poor a $1,000 scholarship to attend your schools. May God continue to watch over you as you begin the next phase of your life. We both, we all love you both. Come on down.
Okay, now for the sermon. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? No, I'm just joking. Go back to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. It's been a really good day to, uh, to honor and to recognize and to see uh, our children growing up and, and doing a lot of various things. So as we conclude, I want to bring our attention back to this scripture. Starting in verse 1, we'll read 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, Now listen to this. For the joy set before him endured the cross. The joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Considered him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you and I, so that our children, so that our young adults will not grow weary and lose heart. If you have any need this morning, this is a time that we're able to share those needs during the song or, or after the song. Our prayer warriors will, will stay up. And, and we want to be here for you to be able to push through, to keep on keeping on, to run this race with endurance. But we know we can have confidence in that because Christ has set out before us and endured the cross so that when we do fail, He picks us back up. Please come as we stand and we sing. I could just sit. I could just sit and wait for all your goodness. Hope to feel your presence. I could just stay. I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you. Hope to feel something again. I could hold on. I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. I could hold on, I could hold on to who I am and never let you. Change me from the inside. I could be safe. I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home. Never let these walls down. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper. And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You lead me, Lord. I can hold on. I can hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I can be saved. I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home. Never let these walls down. But you have called me higher. You have called me deeper. And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper. And I'll go where you Light the path before me. I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life. So let your mercy light the path before me. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper. And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher. You have 
have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You lead me, Lord. You're dismissed. Have a great week.